So Lord, Father, we thank you, we praise you, we love you, Father God. We thank you for these, these opportunities to gather as the body, with members of the body. Lord, I thank you for this, for this series, this healthy stewardship series. Really understanding what it means from a biblical perspective to be a good steward. It is overwhelming sometimes to realize the abundance of goodness and provision and resources that you've entrusted to us. So Lord, I pray that this message tonight leads us all into better understanding of what it is to be a good steward. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So remember last week, we started the first week at the first night of the series, uh, we talked about who's the owner. And understanding who's the owner, it's God, in case you weren't here last week, God owns everything. Everything. We're the managers, God owns it all. Like that should give us a sense of release, relief in knowing that it's not all on us. So once we come into that understanding, this series is a building block series, and so coming into that understanding that, that God does own everything, but he entrusts us with everything to be good stewards was last week. Tonight what we want to talk about is, is faithful stewards are blessed. And so just a question, if somebody would ask you, uh, how, do you how do you define faithfulness? And I'll give you a second and just think of some Maybe if you've ever been asked that question, or, or I'm asking you, hey, how would you define faithfulness? If I'm like, you know, I heard about it in the Bible, and I saw something about it, but I don't really know, like, what does it mean? What is faithfulness? How do you even define it? And there's a lot of words we could throw out there, obedience and submission and yielding. And, but what about the word multiplication? But I want to tell you, I'm going to show you that there is a direct connection between faithfulness and multiplication. You see, Jesus addresses our roles as a manager of God's resources in Matthew's parable of the talents. And I, I love this parable. It's one of my favorite pieces of Scripture. He uses the parable to teach believers how heaven operates. A lot of times we get disconnected or we're like, I, I just don't understand. Like it's, this, it's almost this like ethereal, transcendental understanding that I just can't wrap my head around. Let me tell you. It is a very real, a very tangible understanding. Heaven is real. The kingdom is real. Luke 17, 20, 21, Jesus tells us, don't go looking over here and don't go looking over there. I'm paraphrasing, obviously. Don't go looking for the heaven, uh, the kingdom in a different place. The kingdom is within you. The kingdom of heaven is as real as you are. And so Jesus is going to use this parable to teach you how heaven operates. It's kind of inside information that he's going to give you. And let want to be clear, when he's talking about the talent, he's talking about money. In this parable, he's talking about money. Specifically, the NLT version, when he's talking about uh, this parable of the five talents, the NLT says bags of silver. Bags of silver. So I want you to understand that when Jesus is giving this analogy, he is talking about money, being a steward of money. Now in the Greek, the word talent, it means, the, word, the Greek word is talenton, and it's a unit of measure for gold or silver. Now one talent of silver, and we're gonna, when we say talent, we're going to be talking about silver because that's what the NLT says it is. One talent equals 75 pounds of silver. Have you ever owned 75 pounds of silver? I don't mean a silver Chevrolet or a silver Pinto back in the day. I mean pure silver. In today's value, a talent, 75 pounds of silver, would be valued at $47,950. So I want to give you some perspective when we're talking about this. Because we'll talk about five talents and two talents and one talent. But I want you to attach, because Jesus has attached the, the, the value of money to this. I want you to have an appreciation for what we're talking about. So one talent, 75 pounds of silver. Today's value, $74,950. Okay? I want you to understand that Jesus is talking about substantial amounts of money that the master has entrusted to these servants. 
I don't want you to feel like, well, it's the master and servants. You probably gave him a nickel, you know, maybe, maybe a couple quarters or something like that. No, no. These are significant amounts of money that the master has entrusted to these servants. In our lives, I want you to see that God has entrusted substantial amounts of resources to us. Whether, you, whether it's squalor or poverty or whatever your station is at this point, understand you've got vast amounts, you've got vast access, access to vast amounts of resources. God trusts you. And you might be saying, well, where is it? Where is it? Where's my 75 pounds of silver? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. That's what we're going to talk about. So we're going to walk through Matthew 25. It's the parable of the talents. But I just want to make sure we've laid that foundation. When we say talent, Jesus is talking about money. So I'll read 25, 14, 15. For the kingdom of heaven, he's talking about, this is how the kingdom of heaven operates. For the kingdom of heaven is like, now he's telling you, y'all, this is what it's like. Don't make any misunderstanding. This is what the kingdom of heaven is like, and this is how it operates. It's like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. The goods that he delivered is what? The talents, which are what? Money. He delivered his goods to them. And to one, he gave five talents. Now, if you're a mathematician, you can multiply 47,950 times five, and you realize how much that old boy's got. And to another, he delivered two talents. And to, and to one another, to each according to his own ability. And immediately, he went away on a journey. What we just read here in this parable is that he, being God, gave a sum of money to each servant. The master gives resources based on our ability. This is what's important in this parable when we're looking at, well, you talk about the haves and the have-nots. Well, it's not based on our, on our natural feelings or emotions or even culture's idea of fairness. What I will tell you is that the kingdom of heaven is not socialism. Some people say, well, they ought to just give everybody the same amount and we can be equal and fair and everybody's got... This is not the way it works. God gives based upon your ability. You know why He does that? To protect you. God's protection for those who do not steward well. We do. We look for anointing. We look for this. We look for a power and authority. And it's like, well, where is it at? Well, God's saying, well, where's the character that's, that's able to carry it? God gives us each according to our ability. With that, there's an understanding that we improve and increase our ability. But you see, he will also give more to steward as your ability increases. I've had people before that thought they were coming into a windfall of literally millions of dollars. And I simply gave them a word from the Holy Spirit and said, he wants you to get your house in order. He wants you to get your nets ready. And, and for one particular fellow, it really caused anger in his life. He really had a hard heart against me for a while. And about a year later, he comes and he goes, thank you. Thank you for giving me that word of correction. Had I received that money at the time, it all be gone today. God protects his resources. He protects you. So let's continue, Matthew 25, 16, 17. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. You see, these two servants, these were smart servants. These were faithful servants. They, the master entrusted them with his own property. And what they did, they stewarded it well by investing it wisely. Now, as we said, I want to be clear, this parable, Jesus is talking about money. But you can start to relay it to other things. What else has God given you with the expectation that you steward well? Has God given you a spouse? Yes. God's given you children? Yes. God's given you your vehicle? Yes. God's given you these shoes? Well, me these shoes? Yes. There's an expectation that we steward them well. A lot of times... Uh, 
Fidel and I were talking just about, the, just about how the workforce and, and just the different mindset in, in this modern culture. And they don't steward opportunity well. Well, when am I going to get a raise? When you learn to do the job that, you, that I'm trying to teach you. It's all, it applies across the board. So Matthew 25, 19 says, After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. What we all know, and I want to remind you, is Jesus will come back and hold us accountable to how we handled what he entrusted to us. What he entrust, This money, these talents, the 75 pounds of silver, that's just a training tool. We're entrusted with the souls of other people. We're entrusted to care for the souls of other people, for our spouse, which is our most important ministry, for our kids, for other people. This money is just a training tool. The big picture is the way we, we steward other people. Amen. We steward those true gifts that God's given us. So when it says the master came back, we will hold an account. Everyone will stand before God in judgment. It's so important to remember God's the owner. God is the owner, and he's going to come back, and he's gonna, he's gonna give it, you're going to have to give an account for everything. So this is the master's response to the two servants. This is what the master tells them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I gained five more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, well done. Good and what? Faithful. Multiplication, faithfulness. Multiplication and faithfulness. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Enter into the joy of your Lord. What a wonderful response to get from the master. But it was based on the multiplication. Through his faithfulness, he multiplied that which was first given to him by the master. What I'll tell you is that this is the only place that we see this phrase in Scripture. Well done, good and faithful servant. Or one of the few places. But it is not to be missed that the reference is in regard to stewarding money well. To stewarding money well. So then we move on. Matthew 25, 22, 23. He also, who had received two talents, came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I've gained two more talents besides them. The Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Now look at the master's responses even to the one that had two talents. It is the exact same response. You see, both received the same reward, despite the fact that one had five and one had two. God gives based on your ability. He doesn't, like I said, it's not socialism where everybody gets five. Everybody gets five. Those extra three that the guy with the two had might have been more than he could have handled. It would have moved him out of the category or the opportunity to be rewarded as a good and faithful servant. God gave him what he could handle. But it doesn't mean he's less than. It meant he's got opportunity to grow. Because he and the guy with the five who got the maximum amount, they both received the same reward. You see, he says, you were faithful in a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. You see, because of their faithfulness, they both received amounts relative to their ability as healthy stewards. Because he stewarded five well, because he stewarded two well, now the Lord knows that he can what? He can trust them to steward more because they've gone through that apprenticeship period. They've learned to steward where they were first um, 
able. What I want to tell you is the amount of money does not mean that you're a good steward. What I will tell you is there's a lot of millionaires who do not steward well. There's a lot of people who live on small amounts of income who do very well. Matter of fact, there, there's a, and I've shared this before on Sunday mornings, it's from the National Endowment for Financial Education. Do you know the percentage of million-dollar lottery and Powerball winners that go bankrupt within three to five years? Do you know the percentage? Seventy percent. Seventy percent of the people who win million and multi-million dollar lotteries and Powerballs go bankrupt within three to five years. You say, how can that be? Well, they weren't prepared to do that. The government did not protect them. The government did not prepare them. This is what God does for us. God protects us. He prepares us. He gives us biblical principles. He gives us discipleship. He gives us a wise counsel to get your nets in order. I shared last week where, where people would tell in earnest, well, I believe that the Lord told me he was going to give me a million dollars. Amen. Do you believe it? Yeah. Have you gotten yourself a CPA? No. Have you taken any money management classes? No. Do you have like a, a, a revocable family? Do you have anything set up? No. That's the 70%. That's the 70%. You see? See, the, and then we go to the third servant, and the master's reaction to the third servant is extremely different. Matthew 25, 18. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. Again, money. We're talking about talents. We're talking about money. This guy got one. Why did he only get one? We can tell. That was based on his ability. Because what did he do? He hid it. Now, whose money? God's money. Let's not make any mistake at all. We're talking about God's money. The resources God allowed that guy, the opportunity to steward. So let's read down, Matthew 25, 24, 28. Then he who had received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown, gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant. You wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. Now what I want to share with you is the third servant is trying to flip the script on the master to justify why he hid the talent. He will not take personal responsibility for his failure, for his lack of faithfulness. What he's saying is, well, it's the master's fault that I'm an unhealthy steward. And we see people like this in the kingdom all the time. They're always broke. They're broke as a joke. And you give them, you give them they just want a hand up. And that hand up or that, or that if I can just get ahead of my bills, that's not helping anybody. Because they're not learning to be a good steward. They're not learning to be a good steward. They're flipping the script back on God. Well, uh, you know, if, if my rent wasn't so high, uh, I would have some money. No. You see what the master is saying? He's not agreeing with this servant's accusations. They're false. They're lies. But what he's saying is, let's say it's true. Let's say I am harsh. Let's say I reap where I don't sow. Let's say where I don't scatter seed. Let's say it's all true. You still could have done more than what you did, which was nothing. You see, the master says, you wicked and lazy servant. Not just wicked by making false allegations against him, but the master goes further and calls him lazy. I will tell you, there's too many people in the kingdom they fail to steward, 
out of sheer laziness. Out of sheer laziness. I want to look at some of, some of what Proverbs has to say about being lazy. I think they're all three on the board. The Bible even tells if you don't work, you don't eat. There are so many people in the kingdom, and it's sheer laziness. And I mean, maybe, maybe it's subscription. And well, do you still watch that, that service? No, we quit watching that a couple years ago. Well, did you cancel the subscription? No, no, I didn't. Okay. Well, what about credit cards? Well, that high interest rate. Well, did you shop around? Look, I'll tell you, every year, every year we do. I'm going to say we because Leah's not here. She's, she's on a, a writing deadline. But, but it's Leah that does it, but I'm going to take credit. Every year we shop everything. We shop our phone. We shop our insurance, our health insurance, our home insurance. We shop everything every year. And every year we realize a couple hundred dollars at least in savings. Every, every quarter we look at subscription services. Do you still use that? No. Then drop it. What about you? Drop it. I'm just saying it comes out of sheer laziness. This is what the Bible says. And, and of course, when the Lord sees that laziness, well, why hadn't you canceled that subscription? I don't know. It's only $25. The Lord puts that little check and says, you're not there yet. You're not there yet. So what I want to ask is, this third servant, what he was doing was, he was stewarding out of fear. He wasn't capable. He wasn't able. Um, he probably never done it before. He didn't bother asking anybody. So he went and did what fear drove him to do, which seems irrational. Why not just go to the bank? Whatever, whether it's 1% interest, it doesn't matter. Do something more than nothing. What he did was he was stewarding out of fear. And before we kick him, we kick him, you know, we want to kick him down. How many of us steward out of fear? People steward their marriages out of fear. Man, I hope they don't leave me. I hope we don't divorce. I hope we don't fight again. They steward out of fear. They steward their kids out of fear. Helicopter parents, always watching over. Won't let them grow. Won't let them make mistakes. Won't let them learn. They're stewarding out of fear. A lot of us in our careers, whether uh, it's we work for somebody else or we've got our own job, we, we work our careers out of fear. Man, I sure hope I don't get laid off. I sure hope we don't go bankrupt. We live in fear. We steward in fear. I will share with, I shared with you last week when you know, when Lee and I, and, and she'd be sick, almost physically ill when I go off to duty, on especially these hot calls, and, and she didn't think I was coming home. And she really had to pray, and the Lord told her to release me, to release me to Him, that I'm His, and He would care for me. Her job to steward me well was to pray for me. So I just, I just ask you to think about the areas in your life that you're, that you're stewarding out of fear. When we accept that God's the owner, we stop clutching to our stuff in fear and start stewarding in faith. Amen. Now, I don't mean being reckless with anything, but I mean going to the Lord in prayer, asking for, for direction, coming to, these, to you guys, to the mature saints in the body. You want to climb the Himalayas? Find yourself a Sherpa. Find yourself somebody that's already been up that mountain. Amen. And you talk to them and you follow them. This is the way that we've got to steward in a healthy way. So Matthew 25, 28, the, the master tells that, that wicked, lazy servant, so take the talent from him and give it to him who has 10 talents. So remember, the guy with the five, the master gave him five more. Now he's got 10. But guess how many he's got now? He got 11. This is proof that the kingdom of heaven is not socialist. Everybody doesn't get equal. Everybody doesn't get fair. And this is an example of how the kingdom operates. It doesn't operate based on our feelings or our emotions. Or, well, they got more than me. Well, do you know how much time they put into stewarding well? This is, this is real life consequences when we don't steward well. When somebody gives you a car that they're not using, and like I said, it's three to 5,000 miles over oil change, and that car blows up, 
And then you wonder why nobody else gives you another car. Because you didn't steward that car well. And a lot of times, even if someone's got a car to give you, the Lord will stop them from giving that car until you learn to steward well. The reality is you may learn, you may have to learn stewarding a bicycle to get yourself back and forth to where you need to go. But God's not doing it out of punishment. He's doing it out of protection. He's doing it out of protection. You see, kingdom provision is not about sharing the wealth. Kingdom, like I said, is not about socialism. It's about giving to those who are faithful, healthy stewards who are willing to grow the kingdom. Faithfulness and multiplication are directly connected. Are directly connected. You see, there's no choice but to multiply God's kingdom. We either gain and get, or we can be lazy and lose. This is the choice that we get to make. And Jesus, make, Jesus makes it very clear. There's so many folks that, that, that are believers or self, self-professed believers, and, and they do nothing to multiply the kingdom. And this is what Matthew, this is the real world consequences. It says, for to everyone who has, more will be given. And he will have an abundance, but from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And we say, well, that sounds harsh. That's reality. We have got a mission. We have been commissioned to grow the kingdom. We have been, we have been commissioned and equipped to be good stewards through faithfulness, to multiply all that God's given us. It started in the garden. Be fruitful and multiply. Everything we go through today is to bring us back to the garden. Amen. Amen. Everything brings us back to the garden. So I've said before, People say, well, then where, where's my dominion? Where's my authority? Well, how's your stewardship? How are you stewarding the bicycle that the Lord gave you? Well, I've been going back and forth to work pretty steady. Amen to that. Then I believe you've got a car on its way. How do you steward your spouse? Steward well. Steward well. Guess what? Your children are watching that. And now you're bearing fruit. You're being uh, faithful in multiplying the kingdom. So just a couple of discussion questions. And like I said, we always want to, I want to try to be a better steward of time during this series. But how does your relationship with God currently affect the way you manage your money? Are you, are you tithing or are you not out of fear? We keep talking about first fruit, first fruit, that first fruit, that first was meant to redeem the rest. And if your first money goes to Starbucks or your first money goes to, to pay the bills at the electricity company, well, I can tell you that the barista and the, and the clerk at the, at the electric company, they can't redeem the rest of the, rest of the provisions that God's given you. Are, you. are you stewarding, are you managing your money out of fear or out of faithfulness? Have you considered that one of the reasons that God hasn't answered your prayers yet is because he knows you can't handle it? And it's not meant in a bad way. It's not meant in a mean way. God's protecting you. I shared with you guys 10 years ago when he called me out of my career. I just want you to go to work for me. You spent your career locking men up. I want you to spend your life setting them free. I was ready to set some people free. The problem was I hadn't been set free at that moment. So I learned to steward. I learned to steward the word of the Lord. And then he started to give me different opportunities. Those, those prayers that I had with 10 years ago, Lord, give me a microphone and a stage and let me rock and roll. The Lord protected me. He protected me. And to be clear, it's not a stage. This is a platform. A stage is where you perform. If you're looking for breakthrough, really press in to see where's the resistance. Where is it that maybe you're not stewarding well? I want to say, or I want to finish up with this. It said, we, have, we all have the power to increase our ability. Don't think that you're stuck with two because we saw where the Lord gave him four. And I will tell you that I guarantee he'll take that four, multiply it to eight and on and so. But this is how we, in a practical application, that we learn 
to increase our ability. Number one, I think there's a slide. We've, we've got to begin by stewarding well. If there's areas in your life that you're not stewarding, start doing so. I've used the car example a couple of times. That's one of the most tangible things in our lives. It's a daily reminder, especially when that oil light's on and it's begging you to change it. That's stewardship. Steward well. You know, with our health, steward well. Learn to steward well. If you need to grow skills, do it. If you're not a good manager of money, take a Dave Ramsey class. Talk to the, to the elders. Talk to people that are, that are good with stewardship. If you want to start a business, talk to someone who's been in business, in their own business. You want to know how to work well and be a good employee? Talk to someone that's a good employee. If you need the skill, get it. If you, know to go back, if you need to go back to school, then do that. Do whatever it takes to increase your, your ability to steward well. If you need help and wisdom, ask. Everybody's a little further along than each other. There's always a Paul and there's always a Timothy. If you're the Timothy, connect to the Paul. And do whatever God's calling you to do. Be obedient. Asafi gave such a great example about just being obedient. Do whatever God's calling you to do. And if you want to be trusted with more, you have to manage what you currently have well. Well, I know so many people, I hear it all the time. Well, if, if, if I just had extra, if I just had this, I just, and God's not going to give it to you. Steward what you have now. I will guarantee you that wherever you are at this point, if you will begin focusing on what needs to be stewarded better, you will begin to see those increases. Whether it's your marriage relationship or the relationship with your kids or your ministry, whatever it is, really pray about it and ask the Holy Spirit to show you what's not being stewarded. Well, our time, our time, it's a great place to start. So this really is, this is such a powerful scripture, such a, a powerful learning lesson, because what I love about it is that the Lord does. He connects your faithfulness to multiplication. It's not luck, it's not happenstance, it's not random, it's not karma. It is your faithfulness and your willingness to steward well. So I thank you for tonight. I appreciate y'all being here. If we can stand and, and we'll pray out. Lord, Father, we thank you, Lord, we thank you. We praise you for these, for these good, eternal words, Lord. I know it's easy to, to click on the social media and find some, some financial guru or some life coach or, or everybody's got an opinion. But Lord, your word, your word, your word mm, is eternal and without error and is perfect and is meant for our edification and multiplication. So thank you for this scripture, Lord. Thank you for this parable. I pray that, 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 that we go home and, we, and through the week we, we read over this, we pray over this. We ask your Holy Spirit to, to reveal to us these areas in our lives where, where maybe we've taken a talent and we've buried it in the ground. Or learn the lessons from those other talents that we've invested wisely. Lord, I pray that this message is for, for edification and correction and motivation. Yes. I pray for the multiplication of blessing over this body, over this church. We love you, Lord. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.